In January, the regulator released the latest set of global accounts for RPs. Lots of information around the financial health and maintenance spend of our organisations. There were some interesting numbers around rents and service charges. In this video, I want to look at two in particular. First, we have service charge income versus service charge costs. It's no surprise that in 21-22, the gap between income and cost rose from 398 million to more than 450 million pounds. To give you some context, 450 million pounds would pay for nearly 3,000 affordable homes at the average cost of 150,000 pounds per unit. Just the 52 million increase since the last set of accounts would pay for nearly 350 homes. Closing the gap isn't just around financial efficiency, it impacts our ability to deliver affordable housing options. The second I wanted to look at is rent and service charge as a percentage of turnover. There was a small decrease in the average percentage of turnover being made up of rent and service charges from 78% in 2021 to 77% in 2021 22 This, however, only tells part of the story. Of the 204 providers who submitted their accounts in the latest release, 68 have a turnover where rent and service charge makes up 85% or more of the total. And of those 68, 15 had an operating margin of less than 15%. Of those 15, they averaged a 1.1 million negative gap in service charge income and cost. As the pinch of capping hits, organisations who rely on rent as a primary source of income and have low operating margins are those who will feel the pinch first, making the need to close the gap between service charge income and costs an imperative. This is just a small taste of the analysis that can be drawn from the data, which lays out the importance of getting rent and service charges right, and how, at the moment, the sector has a long way to go.